and hi, welcome to the session. Uh, please introduce yourself. Hi there, uh, my name is Vicki Obi. I'm from New Brunswick, Canada, and I'm a talent acquisition partner at CIBC. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Vicky. So we are discussing about the workday. So, like you know, what is workday and uh, how it is beneficial for the companies, uh, and so far and so forth. So before we go into the concepts of the workday, the modules of the workday, right? Let me explain the tenants. The terminology when we say tenant is done nothing but that's access. Okay, software access. So that accesses we call here as tenant. In workday, we have four types of tenants. Gender, usually, okay. The first type of tenant is the live tenant. Okay, guys, uh, uh, do you guys have any disturbance or anything like that? I mean, my voice is uh, clear and right. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. that's great. So the first type of tenant is the live tenant. The live tenant is like uh, the whole action is going to be there on the live tenant. The everything. So we usually don't mess with the live tenant, right? If you do mess with the live tenant, you're going to get fired. Simple as that. Okay. So the live tenant is the the whole action is going to be on that. There the live action is going to be there. That is called the live tenant or the production tenant. And the second type of tenant is the sandbox tenant. Guys, don't worry about remember remembering anything. I'm going to explain uh, the topics here and I'm going to uh, show you on the screen also. Okay. The second type, guys, you can interact with me. Like you know, if you have any queries, okay, you know, you can respond so that you know going to be easy for your end and also my end so the second type of tenant is uh, sandbox tenant sandbox tenant sandbox tenant is kind of tenant that we use for if we have to test something if we have to build something right uh, within three to five business days then we are going to use the sandbox tenant for now just bear with me why only three to five days okay and the third type of tenant is sandbox preview. <clears throat> sandbox preview tenant is uh, every year Workday releases new updates and features in March and September. Okay, so every company don't need new features. Am I right? Your requirement is different than my requirement. Province requirement is different than Hamels or Wikis. So based on the client, based on the company, right, they're going to test out those new features or updates in the sandbox preview tenant. If the client need those new updates or new features, right, then they're going to they're going to implement in the production tenant. If not, then they're going to leave that. Okay. Guys, that's the most important. Sandbox preview is for only to test the new features and updates. Okay, guys. Okay. Come on, guys, respond, please. Yes. Okay. At least one. Okay, that's great. Okay. The next, the last tenant is the implementation tenant. I said, like, you know, on the second tenant, the sandbox tenant, if we can build something or if we want to test something, if we can achieve that within three to five business days, then we're going to use the sandbox tenant. Obviously, you're going to ask me, like, hey, if it is more than that, more than uh, three to five business days, then what? Then we are going to use the implementation tenant. Okay. Uh, anyone can respond. So, so what is the difference between the sandbox and the implementation tenant? One's a testing piece, and the other piece is uh, in somewhat production. Is we're no, introducing. No, no, no. Sandbox. No. Uh, the sandbox tenant, okay. 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 Uh, uh, sandbox tenant and sandbox preview, both are different. Sandbox preview for the updates, for to test the new updates and the features. Okay. Uh, let's let's uh, forget about for a second. Let me share the screen and I will explain uh, uh, visually so that you will get better understanding that. Okay, guys. Okay. Uh, my screen is visible, right, guys? Right? Yes, yes, yes. it's visible. You see Excel. Actually, okay, please do respond. I appreciate that. Thank you. So, like I said, the first tenant is what? Live? Tenant. Uh, one second. Okay. Guys, uh, 
is it small my screen or uh, is it uh, do you want me to maximize or do you want me to zoom my screen a little bit yeah if it feels bigger nice. that'd be great uh, how about how about now perfect okay that's great so we have a live tenant what is a live tenant like i said before we use this is a production tenant which all the action happens here okay all the action action happen here which means every day we use the production tenant for something it is not for the testing purposes guys it is the where the whole thing going to be done where the client going to use it or the workday team going to use it this is the production tenant we don't mess with the production tenant or we don't do anything to the production tenant simply to say don't miss don't mess with the production tenant if you do then you're going to get fired <clears throat> okay the second tenant is the is the yes sir uh, wiki sorry just uh, trying to navigate this new meeting platform for me sorry okay okay, okay. okay. No, issues. no issues no issues so the second tenant is the sandbox tenant so Abhi, I have a question, please. Yes, please. So that uh, the, the, you said the production tenant, that means only the client side, they have the access to that and they can, it's for them to ask for some changes or whatever they want to do. Is it for them? No, no, no. Both the client and the workday team going to have the access. See, client going to have some people going to have the access for the live tenant. Okay. However, usually they don't mess with the live tenant because let's say uh, Hamel, right? If you are yes. hiring me, if you are the client, you are hiring me to work on the your project or your workday thing, right? Obviously, right. you don't know anything about the workday or you, don't, you are not good with the workday. Am I right? Yes. As a client, you are not going to, even though you have the access, you are not going to uh, uh, mess with the live tenant because you you have no good idea on the uh, uh, workday. Okay. So the, the workday team. So as as the workday team, I have access to live tenant, sandbox tenant, sandbox preview, all the tenants. But right. but live tenant have all the live data, right? All the right. live data. Everything is going to be there. So we don't usually go work on the live tenant. We just leave it there. Okay. We do some modification. Right. If you want to do some modifications, right? We're going to come here on the sandbox tenant. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. The second tenant here it is. Uh, one second. Is the sandbox tenant. Here the sandbox tenant. What is the sandbox tenant? See, if you see, you can ask me, hey, if you if you don't want me to mess or if you don't want me to work on the live tenant, so where should I work? Right? That is the logical query. Am I right? Here we are going to do the work on the sandbox tenant and also if you want to build some uh, if you want to uh, build some report or integration or if you want to do some uh, project work or if you want to do some testing right the first option is going to be the sandbox tenant and if you can build that within three to five business days then only you're going to opt for the sandbox tenant. Then if I say that right, you might have a query. Why so? Right, uh, Shika, Hamal, Wiki, right? Why? Why only three to five business days? Yeah, I'm correct. Okay, I will explain it later. Just bear with me for that, okay? Okay. Okay, if you can build something within three to five business days, then you're going to opt for the sandbox tenant. Okay. And I will come back and I will explain it why. The next tenant is going to be the sandbox preview. Sandbox preview tenant is for to test. new updates and features okay let me put here march and september 
because the during these two months workday releases new updates and features obviously like i said right you need to know how these features will affect your data right you might need those things new updates or features you might not don't need those then so every march and september see guys when i say right even though we get the new updates in march and september right it might take three months four months six months to test those things right it may take only a week so it totally depends on the features so for that purpose we're going to use the sandbox preview can make sense so far yep okay that's great so the next tenant is the implementation tenant see in implementation tenant we use this one for anything more than three to five business days i mean if we if you need to build something or testing whatever the whatever the scenario is right if it is more than three to five business days then we are going to opt for the implementation tenant okay i said everything that's fine that's great but i didn't explain why it is only three to five business days here right, guys here in workday every friday they refresh the tenant so what does it mean so let's say we are in july 1st that guys this is for an example okay july 1st friday so they're going to refresh the data refresh the this tenant okay so when they refresh this tenant right whatever the data they have in the live tenant it will be moved to the sandbox tenant a copy of that okay so let's say you have a live tenant lt you have sandbox tenant here so when you refresh on uh, july uh, 1st whatever the data we have so far until july 1st right it will be moved to the sandbox tenant right so no issues that's great so on monday i got a requirement so hamel sent me a requirement saying that hey build this project or build this report so it take let's say for instance uh, three days that's fine because the data is going to be same no issues am i right we have the same data so far between the live tenant and the sandbox tenant right see guys july 1st we have the data july 2nd we have the data july 3rd we have the data july 4th we have the data july 5th we have the data but during all these five days sandbox only going to have the july 1st data right because still it, did, it didn't got refreshed it only refreshed on the july 1st so always remember guys in sandbox tenant we have one week's past data old data so if it takes let's say 10 days right after uh, the next week which is uh, july what 8th if they get refreshed right you cannot test your uh, uh, end result might be different because your data is when you're testing on on july 1st it is different compared to the july 8th am i right guys right yes correct so so you you, you won't get the right uh, 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 end result you might get confused because on july uh, uh, 5th you have a different uh, result on july 8th you have a different result so for that purposes if you can achieve that one achieve that requirement from the client within three to five days that's fine go ahead with the sandbox and no issues if not then we are going to go for the implementation tenant you might ask like hey you just said every week every friday they're going to refresh the tenant so what's the difference between the sandbox and the implementation tenant? that's the logical query am i right guys 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. So in implementation, then they usually like do like uh, forty days, fifty days. Even client can uh, request the work. They saying, "Hey, I need ninety days time. Don't refresh implementation then." Makes sense because it could take ninety days. It could take uh, four months for to build something. You never know from the client side. You know, am I right? Right. So, client have that privilege to request work day. Hey, please don't refresh at least for next. Three months, four months, five months, six months. Totally depends on the client and the requirement. So for that reason, we can go ahead and build longer projects in implementation time. Okay, that's great. Okay, so far so good. Uh, now let's take a scenario. Hamel requested me to build a project, a, a report. Let's say, for instance, uh, it might take, let's say, a two months. Deadline. That's my uh, as a workday analyst. My expectation or my projection is it might take maybe a two months uh, deadline. So after sixty days, right, the total data is ch uh, changed. Compare July first, right? Then uh, I said um, two months. So August. So by September first, I built that report. So my data is outdated. Am I right? It is two months old data in the implementation data. Right, live tenants data right. is totally different compared to the implementation tenant. It is two months old data. Client Hamel said, "Don't refresh uh, implementation tenant for next ninety days." So, I have, I have sixty days old data. So my uh, my testing might not be perfect, right? My testing is based on six uh, two months old data. So what should I do next? Next logical step. Go back to sandbox tenant. Exactly. exactly. I have to refreshing the sandbox again. Exactly. I have to move this project or report to the sandbox tenant. I do my testing again for next two or three days. If everything works fine, then I move it to the live box. Make sense, guys? Right. If if I if there if I face any issues, right? If I don't uh, get the uh, 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 required results, right? Again, I, I'm going to move from sandbox to the implementation tenant. I do again. I go, mm -hmm. I'm going to work again on the project. I'm going to do some testing. Again, I'm going to migrate the uh, my project to the sandbox. Again, I do testing. If everything is fine, that's great. Uh, I'm going to move to the live live tenant. If not, the same procedure, guys. You see the you see the uh, process here. So if you were to go with, um, so you do your refresh back to Sandbox Tenant, something went awry, you didn't get what you expected, mm -hmm. then you go, want to go to implementation, the mm -hmm. corporation would then need to say, okay, here's their new set of data, do not refresh this set, correct? Mm -hmm. Like you'd have to ask each time at exactly. implementation? Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. because uh, at implementation then, right, no matter, because I'm not the only one working on the implementation then. So right. uh, let's say three or four other guys, three or four other projects are going on. So if I go to Hamel and say, hey, Hamel, please uh, ask the work day to refresh, right? She might not going to accept my request because there are three other projects are going on still. So I have to judge here at the sandbox tenant itself. What's, the, what's wrong with uh, my report? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with my project? Then I have to do the estimation and then I have to come back and I have to go back and see again, like, because I already have a report here, right? I have the result here. So what's going, what's going on here with the implementation then? Then I need to fix those things. So I'm missing something. I fix this. I go back to the sandbox. I, book, I go back to the live tenant. Same procedure again and again and again until. So the implementation success. tenant is um, like, so for example, for CIBC, it would be everyone who's working on the implementation tenant in CIBC and Workday. That's the like it's not specific to Vicky's implementation. It's specific to that data set. Exactly. Like, or, or, okay, exactly. gotcha. And also, not only that, but also in implementation tenants, also sometimes we can have a few types of implementation tenants. It totally depends on what type of subscription your client going to purchase. See. 
like a, like the same scenario. Let's take the same scenario, right? Uh, I I I did something wrong. Okay, my results are not up to the par in the sandbox tenant. So I have to go back. If I have to go back, right? I'm doing the same testing in the implementation tenant with the same data. It will be it will be showing the same thing, right? Right. So yeah. sometimes uh, there are there are there are types of uh, implementation tenants also. We can request to refresh for a certain period of time to for to do the testing. Okay, that is a different story. It is totally depends on the client. But in generally, right? In generally, most of the times, uh, if you are doing uh, implementation projects like from the scratch, you are going to use the implementation tenant. And if you are doing uh, uh, already implemented projects, right? Most of the times you are going to use the sandbox tenant, and most likely uh, you're going to do you're going to finish the requirement from the client within three to five days. If it is not the case, then implementation tenant, and you are not going to face any issues because once you build the report or build the integration, right? If everything works out in the implementation tenant, most likely it is going to work well in the sandbox tenant also. Okay, guys. Okay. Any queries? Okay. Come on. You must have some queries. You guys, a lot of guys are from non IT background. So, uh, Abhi, I have a question, you know. Yeah. There might be two different scenarios already implemented workday and uh, fresh implementation of, uh, you know, uh, yes, workday yes, yes. again. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Earlier, uh, the client or the organization might be using some other, uh, what do you say? Um, other ERP. Other software. Other yes, ERP, yes. right? Might, might yes. be someone is using Oracle HCM or someone is using PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, or mm -hmm. <coughs> maybe SP. Mm -hmm. So, how, how Workday works actually in this scenario? See, guys, uh, like I said, right? Uh, Workday actually is a, a combination of functional modules and technical. In technical, right? We are talking about the integrations. Uh, I don't want to go a lot on the integ integrations right now because if I do, you guys are going to get confused. But as for your query, right? We have tools to get the data from third-party applications directly to the workday, and those are called as data conversion tools. And the team is called as data conversion team. We have different types of uh, integrations for to do that. Inbound integrations. And also connectors. Uh, I don't want to explain, like I said, right? But we can easily connect with any third party application to get the data from other ERPs to the workday. The, and that's the reason why a lot of companies uh, are migrating to the workday right now. Like you said, right? We have two types one is implemented, one is, uh, one, the other one is implementing. Implementing is kind of like in the process, right, guys? Uh, even though we say implemented projects, means still it is also kind of implementing projects because we need to have a, we need we need to going to add new data. But compared to the implementation implemented projects, implementation projects take a lot of time for to implement. <clears throat> Once you implement, right, the the time it, it takes, right, it, it is very less for to add new data. But it is it is obvious, right? If you doing any anything or everything from scratch, it takes a lot of time, right? If you already have everything in place, and if you want to uh, make some modifications or if you want to add something or to take out something, it it will take only less time, right, guys? Abhi, I have a question actually. Uh, yeah, what please, is the please. normal uh, average time uh, for the fresh implementation of the workday? Uh, it totally depends on the company. Uh, uh, Praveen, because uh, yeah, exactly. Project size and also the ERP they are using. Mm -hmm. You see, the third party application depends on the third party application and the workday team that you have. It, it totally depends on the co uh, competence. You know, the see, if you are talking about like a, a mid level company, we are talking about maybe two or three months we can implement the project. If you are talking about a, a multinational corporation, it will take a lot of time, maybe six months, because see. We are not going. We are not going to go live uh, immediately. We have to do a lot of testing, right? right? So it totally depends on the client, third-party application. You know, a lot of variables to consider for to answer that. 
Excuse me. And uh, my next question is, how is the uh, workday at CM Magdai, person's uh, consultant, is a uh, role and responsibility towards the fresh implementation? Right from the scratch, he has to collect the, he has to interact with the client and you know, collect the data and uh, his SOW and stuff. Yes, yes. See, guys, let's take an example, right? I, um, like Hamel, right? Let's say Hamel uh, just want to migrate to the uh, workday. She's using some third party application, okay? Uh, she's going to uh, come to, let's say, ABC company in India. Okay. Hamel asked, like, you know, hi, I want to migrate to the workday. How long might it take? Okay. So, as a workday team, so in workday team also, we're going to have a sub team called data conversion team. They are the responsible people for to migrate the data from third party application to the workday. Okay, guys, that is the terminology data conversion team. What did they're going to do they're going to assess how much data how much volume of the data how long will it take because their type their terminology and third party applications terminology and workday terminology is a little bit different maybe much different it, de it depends on the third party application so we they're going to assess and they're going to talk with the their data team, third party applications data team and they're going to uh, request the data as per the require as per the uh, requirements of the workday it is a process okay uh, then after getting the data right the responsibility of the data conversion team to getting the data into the implementation tenant and before getting the data into implementation tenant right they need to put everything in place i'm right guys so if you don't have some space where i'm going to put the data let's say for instance uh hamel want to send a car from her apartment to the new apartment let's say the new apartment is the work day she wants to send the car and i'm the apartment guy let's say i'm the work day guy if i don't have the place garage place where i'm going to put that car am i right i have to put everything in place before i get the data from the third party application and that and that responsibility is the data conversion team's response uh, responsibility they're going to actually uh, again i'm going to work with the other work date members to put everything in place like creating st uh, organization structures creating staffing models uh, creating compensations y you see what i'm saying guys before getting the data we need to put everything before we move a furniture we need to have a home we need to have an apartment guys got it am i confusing you or are you guys following no it makes sense okay see guys it is uh, let me let me say this right come uh, when you compare with uh, with uh, workday with any other erp right workday is very easy to which when i say that right if you pay attention with uh, good practice you can master workday like that like that i have seen a lot of guys uh, from non it background who are doing great job in workday with good packages working for multinational corporations, dealing with multiple clients. See, uh, let me give you an example. I have few people who, whose background is, uh, uh, whose background was a bachelor's of commerce. They don't have a good administration skills, good communication skills, or IT skills. They got trained. They did their part. They got, they, they start working with broken English. Guys, my English is so bad, you're not going to believe me if you if you uh, speak with me like a uh, uh, few years back. Hey man, what the hell you are talking like? You know what the hell you are saying? That's horrible, my language. Because you are going to deal with multiple clients from foreign nationals, especially from US and Europe, and of, of course from APAC also. So obviously, uh, maybe not on the first year or the second year. Sooner or later, you're going to pick up the communication skills. Soon or later, you're going to pick up the workday skills. Soon or later, you're going to pick up the people skills, how to speak with different people. That's your job. I'm right, guys. I'm right. If you are going to be a, a part, if you are communicating with your clients every day, you need to understand. You need to, you're, you're dealing with multiple clients, multiple attitudes, multiple characters. It, it would be a good journey. Trust me on this. So anyway, we are uh, moving away from the main topic.
So any queries guys so far? <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm doing a good job there, am I right? Yeah, I have a question. <laughs> Um, yes, so let's say I've done my implementation. I felt like everything was perfect. My data team said, yeah, Vic, we can go in and do implementation now, and, or we can actually go live. But then something blows up, like something I didn't know or hadn't accounted for. How quickly can you undo a, um, like the, the work? that yes, going yes. live like if you put it in and it was like something you yeah know. it is it would be there always okay <laughs> it's, it's in the cloud always it, it is going to be there no see okay. uh, we always we are we have an option like you know especially for the implementation projects when you are going live right you always have an option to take out all the data there itself from the live tenant okay to clear like reset like okay. reset button okay. So that would be a problem, but if you do that right, most likely it would cost you a job for exactly. the data conversion time. So uh, that's why the testing will take a lot of time. Right. Mm -hmm. The testing team will take a lot of time and data conversion team will, they have to work uh, parallelly, correctively. So that, then only they're going to go like, because see, I have seen, uh, I have seen a lot of people got fired for uh, uh, simple and uh, silly mistakes because they took testing lightly. Mm. Because people think like, you know, building a report, building an integration, building something, building integration, uh, working on a project is the big thing. But no, 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 no. The testing is the most important thing at the, at the end of the day. Okay. See, even though I build the report, I build the integration, at the end of the day, if the testing team doesn't do the, their job, right, they, they're not going to fire me. <laughs> they're going to fire the testing guy. Mm -hmm. So, so they, we're going to have reset button, no issues. But once we implement the project, once we went live for let's say three months, six months, right? Then we cannot do that. Okay. That would be an issue. Okay, guys. Okay. So, so, uh, so these are the topics we are going to cover uh, in the coming sessions, guys. So first, let me introduce supervisory organization. Guys, I will show you everything in the tenant uh, uh, tomorrow and next uh, sessions, okay? I just want to, uh, uh, I want you guys to use the terminology. I don't want to go to tenant, I, hey, this is how you're going to do that. Then it is, it won't make any sense, okay? Organization. Okay, what is a supervisory organization? Okay, uh, let's say uh, the best example in lamest terms. Uh, let's take an example of building an automobile, okay? someone is building an automobile first they want to build the outer structure and they're going to install uh engine uh, the other accessories right here in uh, in the corporate world in company supervisory organization is nothing but the outer structure we are building the structure hierarchical structure of how it looks for example right let's take an uh, let's take an company uh, apple let's say orange orange ink usa and we have uh, other branch in india other in canada other in uk so we are telling the work there what is uh, what is the superior supervisory organization a superior a supervisory organization is nothing but the uh, organization structure okay what we do here when we say supervisory organizations we are creating supervisory organization and we telling what is the superior supervisory organization and what are the subordinate so, uh, supervisory organizations and also please keep this in mind guys every organization is a supervisory organization when I say that, even a superior, superior uh, uh, organization is also a supervisory organization. A subordinate organization is also a supervisory organization. Let me let me uh, elaborate on that. So, like I said, orange, uh, uh, orange INC USA Incorporation USA is the superior organization okay 
so when i say superior organization so uh, which is which does uh, which means nothing but like uh, a headquartered company uh, microsoft uh, let's take uh, the best example apple right apple have branches in multiple countries right guys right yes they have they have uh, manufacturing uh, in china they have assembling in india they have sales in usa so they have different departments in different nations right now imagine this same as so obviously apple's headquartered company is going to be the superior supervisory organization am i right right guys that that, yeah. is, that is the headquartered company you are the boss okay so then the next tier let's here take orange india orange canada orange uk so these are subordinate organizations right right guys this is the headquartered company they have branches in india they have branches in canada they have branch in uk these are subordinate organizations to usa organization right mm -hmm. so what we did here is just nothing but we put the data in a hierarchical structure right this is the top one these are the subordinates and let's say for instance we have two more orange delhi orange bangalore orange ontario and uh, let's say in uk we have london okay so this delhi and bangalore are subordinate organizations to what orange india exactly india exactly this ontario is the subordinate organization for what canada and also for USA exactly London is the subordinate for UK and USA right? both exactly see see how easy is that <coughs> excuse me guys so what we just did here is we built the outer structure of the organizations okay we just put the data in a hierarchical structure that's that's all we, we did right so here India is a supervisory organization or a subordinate organization or both? Both. Okay. So what about Delhi? Is it a subordinate organization or a supervisory organization or both? Subordinate. Subordinate organization is a supervisory organization also. Superior organization is also a supervisory organization. So every organization is a supervisory organization okay guys any queries guys don't worry about that i will show everything how to do these things in the tenant i just want you to understand what we are going to discuss in the uh, coming sessions okay Abhi, i would like to know one thing yes, orange please. delhi will be the subordinate one only right it's yeah, supervisory organization also. See, 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 guys, 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 guys. Don't get confused.
we can't hear you yeah, yeah i'm just typing guys just one second okay no problem yeah okay Abhi, you mean to say all organizations are organizations are supervi supervisory organizations, right? Exactly, exactly, guys. It doesn't matter it's, whether it is a superior it, organization. Either it is Orange USA or Orange Bangalore or Orange Ontario. All all organizations are a supervisory organizations. Are supervisory organizations. However, right? We call this as a subordinate organization to just to say that it is subordinate to the USA. That's all it is. As good as for the orange India as well, right? Exactly. And Delhi is the subordinate for the India, and India is the subordinate for USA. So what we are what we are trying to do is what what I'm trying to say here it is we are putting the data in a hierarchical structure, right? This is a tree structure. Am I right, guys? Yes. Yeah. That's all we are doing, guys. Tomorrow we are going to take an example. How, I mean, how many of you guys got the tenant access? I have it. Uh, Alia, uh, sorry, uh, who is? Uh, is it uh, Shika? You said you got it already. No, 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 no. no I didn't get uh, it. Okay, guys. Uh, please make sure to get the tenant as soon as possible, right? Um, tomorrow I'm going to show you how to create this in the tenant. Uh, and I want you to practice every day, guys, because if you practice, that will imprint in your mind. If not, it will go like within two or three days, because trust me, I do this for a living. Okay, tomorrow we're going to take an example, a multinational corporation example, and we're going to create superior supervisory organizations, subordinate supervisory organizations, and we're going to uh, create in a multiple ways how we can create them. I'm going to show you that and after we're going to spend a little bit uh, time on this one because this is the first step right this is the starting phase if you understand the concept of how to create these things then the next part of creating locations location hierarchy regions regional hierarchy cost centers cost center hierarchy companies company hierarchy are very easy okay the first step this is very important and i want you to spend a little bit more time so that once you understand this Probably it will take only two days for to create all those things. Okay, guys. Okay, I don't want to go more concepts today, guys. I don't want to get confused. I don't want you get confused. So let me stop uh, sharing my screen. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys. Um, have a nice uh, weekend. Um, see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Abhi. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, Abhi. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.